Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel. And today's video is the second in a three-part series where I show you how I converted my 2015 Honda Odyssey minivan into a camper that sleeps too. The first video covered my requirements and the bed platform build. This video will cover other sleeping concerns and how we use the van for living space when we are not sleeping. The last video is gonna cover the kitchen and other miscellaneous items. Okay, so I already covered how I built the bed platform, so now let's talk about other sleeping issues. Here are some other things that make sleeping in the van awesome. Mattress. So one of the key elements to this design was having an actual mattress. I detest blow-up mattresses. I don't like the way they shift around when you're moving, and they are ridiculously noisy. So getting a nice, thick foam mattress that was 48 inches wide was key to this project. Also, I can sew, but I didn't really want to spend a bunch of time sewing mattress covers. So here's what I found. It is a six inch mattress that folds in half into a little couch when not in use for sleeping. So I didn't love this lump here when using it as a mattress. So I ended up cutting off that whole piece and using it just for when we're not camping and it is in couch mode. So it means that the mattress isn't quite as long as I'd like it to be, but we do have a ton of blankets and beddings that we can store at the end. So you don't even, you can't even tell that the mattress doesn't reach all the way to the end of the platform. I did have to do a little sewing to close up the seam when I cut this piece off. So we keep the mattress folded during the day and then we pull it out the back of the van to unfold it and slide it back in for sleeping. The nice thing is that when we're not camping, we fold it up, we put the back on and we use it as a little couch in our basement so it doesn't take up a bunch of storage space in our house. Bedding. I bought sheets that specifically fit a three quarter antique bed, which is conveniently 48 inches wide, somewhere between a full and a twin. The rest of the bedding is straight off my bed, bed from home, but when the temperatures drop, we're probably gonna need to invest in bedding that is rated for lower temperatures. When the bed is folded up, we store the bedding in these laundry hampers that fold flat when we're not using them. Privacy. So vans have a lot of windows, which are great for visibility when driving, but not so great when you're trying to sleep in private. The first thing I did was make Reflectix cutouts for all of the windows in the second row, the third row, and the back window. So Reflectix is an insulation that is designed to reflect heat, but everyone seems to use it for this purpose. To do this, I made a cutout um, of each window using taped together pieces of paper. I had some large size printer paper, which definitely worked best. Then I cut the Reflectix to the size of each individual window. I only wanted to use one roll, so I had to tape some pieces together. Once I had cutouts for each window, in order to get them to stay in the window without too much effort, I taped around the sides of each cutout with silver tape and I folded that tape over onto itself. So this created a flexible frame so that I can just push these into the window and they stay all night. I can even open and close the back hatch without the Reflectix falling out. Finally, I labeled each one on the inside with a piece of electrical tape indicating which window they belong to, driver's side or passenger. And that also helps me to figure out which side is inside and which is out. So when we were driving, I store all of these in the window well in the back passenger side. Okay, so that takes care of privacy in the back. Next, I bought these privacy curtains from Amazon. So I'm gonna put links to all of these products in the description section below. They hook easily to these plastic pieces on the sides of my van and you just cinch up the string. Then I attach them to the center of my van with a carabiner hook clip that is hooked over the moon roof opening. These curtains have magnets sewed into them so that they close up really nicely. They are black but they still allow in a bit of light. So I bought black fusible interface, I cut it to size and I ironed it onto the curtains to make a more opaque uh, blackout curtain and they work great. The next issue is that of temperature, temperature control. You have to be able to roll the windows down or you will boil in the van. Unfortunately, along with the fresh night breezes comes insects. So bug, bug screens are really a must. In addition, you wanna be able to put these on while you are inside the car, and you wanna be able to open and close the car doors once the screens are on. I bought this mesh fabric on Amazon along with these heavy duty magnets. In addition, I got a bunch of small binder clips. So basically, I cut the mesh for each window at least two to three inches bigger than the opening on each side. Then on the edges where there is metal in the car, I secure the mesh with magnets. In some cases, I have to stick the magnets into a groove, but in the case of my van, there is metal actually in the back of the groove, so the magnet stays. 
Where there isn't any metal, like on the windows here, I secure the mesh with small binder clips. So these can stay on when you open and close the doors. Everything folds up neatly and I store them in this plastic bag. So this is all well and good until it rains. Now, in order to have airflow, you have to deal with rain dripping into your car. The experts on YouTube insist on getting rain guards or window deflectors to take care of this issue. So I ordered some that were custom made for Honda Odysseys and installed them. Installation is literally like cleaning your car with alcohol, peeling off the backing and sticking them on like a command hook. The other way to create airflow is with these two clip-on USB powered fans. These plug directly into my power station, more on that in the next video, and they clip onto these handles on the van. When it gets cold, I bought a low wattage heater that can also be plugged into my power station, which I feel way more comfortable with than a propane or a gas heater with all of our flammable bedding. So that covers the sleeping, which is a lot. So now let's talk about the living room. So even though I created a lot of storage under the bed platform, I really liked the idea of being able to use this whole front space when we are not sleeping. So that's why I made the front legs of the bed removable. Here's how you take this from bed mode to living room mode. Okay, so first slide this piece of plywood back. Um, it would be usually under the mattress, but right now I don't have the mattress in. Just on top of the other piece of plywood. You can see how much easier it is to do that since they're carpeted. Now I'm taking these pins out um, that keep the metal strip in place. We're gonna deal with that in a second. Then take the legs off. Remember that they're connected um, using those two wooden dowels. Just stack them on top of each other here on the side. Okay, so after this, I'm gonna deal with that metal strip created a little spot here to keep this out of the way and just attach it to that edge with those same three pins. And I've got a bungee cord that I just used to keep all of those legs together. And then I actually use the seatbelt mechanism, the locking mechanism on the seatbelt to cinch all of that stuff over to the side. Okay, so now to change this into living, uh, living room mode, slide that piece of plywood back down and it becomes a floor. This is nice because otherwise the floor is really uneven. There it is, nice carpeted floor there. Okay, so now I've got these two little chairs that fold up into absolutely nothing. Um, they're used for backpacking and they're nice and low to the floor so that you can sit In addition, I bought this iPad stand so it sits, um, that sits in a cup holder so that we can watch streaming TV in here. Since we've cut the cord at home um, and have YouTube TV, as long as we have a cell signal, anything we can watch at home, we can also watch while camping. So obviously we'd rather be hanging out at a campfire than sitting in the van, but for longer trips, this works well um, if it's raining or if the bugs are too annoying. In addition, we generally keep it like this for packing up the car and driving so that we can throw more stuff in without having to organize it underneath the bed immediately. Okay, so now we've covered the bed platform, other sleeping issues, and the living room. Join me in the next video where I show you the kitchen and share other miscellaneous thoughts. And let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.